Speak No Evil is finally here. The movie trailer that has haunted audiences for months in theaters. It feels like every single time I feel like someone goes to the movie theaters, they mention that they saw this trailer. Somehow, I've never seen this trailer or even paid attention to it. And I've also never seen the original. So I have an interesting thought on this film. So let's talk about it. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing Speak No Evil. This is, of course, a remake off the, I think, 2022 movie, and it's a film that I was actually interested in watching back in the day, but then there was two things that happened. One, I heard that the characters were kind of stupid in that movie, and that kind of turns me off from watching films sometimes, and two... They announced the remake, like, pretty fast, and usually when that happens, I know most people love to jump in and dive into the original before they view a remake, but for me, I'm actually kind of the opposite. I like to see remakes first sometimes, and then go back and dive into the film, which I will be diving into the original this week, because I'm actually, like, very curious to see, like, some of the differences and just in general how that film compares. We're talking about Blumhouse's remake now, which, if you don't know what Speak No Evil is about, is about a family who is invited to spend a weekend in an idyllic country house, unaware that their dream vacation will soon become a psychological nightmare. This is directed by James Waltkins, and it stars the likes of James McAvoy, Mackenzie Davis, Scott McNary, Isling Francisco, Ed mention off the top that that's about all I knew about the movie I didn't know anything else about this I didn't know what to expect from this film and it's an interesting one like I'll say that I think speak no evil is an interesting one it's not like the best horror psychological thriller that I've ever seen nor is it like the goriest or most deeply disturbing one but it's one that I actually think is like meant to see with an audience in theaters or just with a group of friends like my audience was having a lot of fun with this movie in terms of like reacting and roaring and laughing and specifically even my wife sitting next to me like the way that me and her kind of got to interact like there was one point where a character does something stupid and she kind of like threw her hands up and then there's another part where a character finally does something smart and you start to cheer for them and it's one of those films that if you can get some fun aspects out of it I think that's what will make Speak No Evil a fun movie and I don't know how that compares to the original of course but I think that's actually one of the strongest aspects about the movie and I'm excited to talk about Speak No Evil today so make sure to leave your thoughts down below hit that like and subscribe button and without further ado let's start with my pros so number one pro the best part about this movie is James fucking McAvoy. James McAvoy is just hands down always one of the strongest parts of any movie this guy is ever going to be casted in, but he's also one of those actors that I always feel is just completely underrated in almost every department, and there was a time in my life where he was my favorite working actor at that point in time. Loved his performances for the most part, and I think Speak No Evil kind of rivals up to that top of what he can do with a psychological breaking character, such as like something that we saw from Split with his character there and kind of this is a completely different take on a psychological nature and like what his character does so well written with this character and primarily all the events that kind of go through here is that some of the suspense and horror doesn't come from brutality or nastiness or just anything of that it's the awkwardness the cringe aspects of certain things within lives and communication between humans and that for me is actually the best part about the film again some people might think it's dumb, but you do always feel that suspense through those points, and James McAvoy plays that up to a T in the way that he makes other actors, or the, at least his character makes these other characters feel uncomfortable in certain things that he plays off, whether it's just like rubbing someone's back and like kind of sniffing them, you know, pulling something weird out of that, or the way that he like treats his kid and like teaches them or maybe he's trying to teach another kid or like parent them. It's all these little ideals that kind of like just raise red flags to you. And it actually makes you think back to the start of the movie where when they first meet and everything kind of seems go lucky and happy, certain things that he says or does kind of falters back to what he does later on. And those red flags were always there. And I love how this film actually really did that. I think that was actually one of the strongest parts is again, finding the suspense in the cringy, aspects of humanity and I don't again I'm really curious to see if the original does that as well but I think that is an aspect that makes this film a little bit different than some other movies and I think also that just goes to his wife in here who is played by Isling Francisco might be mispronouncing that I apologize she's also great in here and I think she plays with that dynamic in such a unique capability and the only reason that this capability works because of their cringiness together 
eight. The fact that you have Scott McNary and, of course, Mackenzie Davis, who are both stellar in here, too. They play a couple that meets them. They have this striking relationship in. You know, they're not really in the best place as well for a couple, but this couple seems to maybe be striking up some love back for them. The case for how they pull this off and their reactions to certain things just play to such a really earth-scattering degree. And I really like how it's like you try to put all these positivities in certain aspects, even if all the red flags are pointing in the wrong direction. So yeah, the performances overall were good. And even the kids in here, I thought they were decent for the most part. They didn't like shake my world or give me the best thing ever. And I think some of that may come down to the writing and some of the frustrations that I have from that. Out of both the kids, I do want to give a shout out to Dan Hugh, who doesn't have really anything to say. Like physically, he doesn't. But his emotional performance, like without the words, was actually pretty strong for a child actor. And I've never actually seen that before. Maybe I have, but it's been quite a while. Yeah, the acting is, of course, great in here. And I also think some of this needs to be acclaimed to James Waltkins, who is the director of this, who I think does a solid job building up the ante and actually bringing up that suspension. And for me, those suspending natures are actually some of the more fun aspects for the movie. And I think that's where this movie just comes back to. It's a crowd pleasing thriller. It's one that you can just have fun with, but understand that there are going to be stupid characters too, which I will talk about in my mixed on con aspect and how that might frustrate some viewers. But for me, like, I didn't think this was like the strongest thing, nor is it like the one of the things that like captivated me, but I was intrigued and I was entertained the entire way through. I think sometimes when you come to a movie like this, even if you are frustrated by certain things and roll your eyes at other departments, you can watch it for what it is and you can be like, yeah, I enjoyed that. So I guess with that said, let's dive into my mixed and con aspects for the movie. So first off, I didn't really know what I was getting into this movie, and I think that might be for some people. My mixed aspect comes from I thought this movie would be a little bit more brutal or fucked up in some ways. And I, you know, I didn't expect it to be like the most messed. I'm not, I'm not talking about in gore or anything like that. But the revelations that you kind of come to the understanding in here, I thought was a little bit predictable. And I don't know if that'll be for everybody, but like about a quarter of the way through once they're actually at this place and like after their first night I kind of sat there and I was like yeah I'm assuming it's probably gonna be like something around this scenario and as watching the movie I was like yep check that box check that box yeah it's gonna be that and it ended up being that one thing so I think for me I would have liked for something more to be fucked up and again I'm assuming the original is going off the same mentality but there just like wasn't as much things and maybe that's not what their point was and maybe the original is not like that but I kind of just wanted a little bit more messed up things that's just me especially when you have the title speak no evil and have a creepy james mcavoy going like this in the poster on the contrary same thing to there the predictability might ruin it for others it, it didn't i still had fun with it for what it was that's where i kind of get down to my biggest issue and i think the issue that will probably annoy the most out of viewers now i think there is fun to be had in this i definitely had fun but sometimes it does bother me and that just comes down to stupid characters. I personally felt that Speak No Evil did have some really dumb characters to the point where I was just like, what are you doing? Like there's certain things where someone drops something and that thing th could help them. They don't grab it. And it, all these little details kind of just peter patter on top of each other. And it just continues to go and go and go. And I was like, come on. But again, I put that in my mix of my con issues because part of it was a part of the adventure and without that you don't get a movie like this it ends the movie too early so i understand why it's there but i can see some people being absolutely flustered by it sometimes it was a little bit too much for me in certain choices but that's that's just me I, and maybe some of that might be because it's an hour and 50 minute runtime and i do feel that maybe they overextend some of the cringy suspensefulness a little bit too much i think about 10 to 15 minutes of this movie could have easily been pulled out and actually maybe mixed up a little bit more specifically in certain details and just certain things that i never really thought were needed it just felt like added additions to that cringy suspensefulness and James McAvoy is doing such a great job so why should we cut it in reality it probably would have helped the pacing and helped some of my frustrations a little bit more you know a lot of that might sound rambled and ranted off but that's just kind of how I felt with speak no evil I liked the movie I thought it was enjoyable is it a movie that I would run back back out of the theater and see again no but if it's someone asked me about the movie I'd say yeah you should go see it 
at least in a theater or at least with your friends. If you can't go see it in the theaters, make sure to get a bunch of friends to watch it together. I'm not saying it's the best movie in the world. It didn't need to be the best movie in the world. I don't know if it's better than the original either, but what I can say is that it is an enjoyable psychological thriller that will make you scream at the screen, scream with your friends with the movie, and not in fear, but in enjoyment, and it's having one of those conversational pieces. So I like Speak No Evil. I think some people might. I think some people might also hate it. It's the perfection of movies. So with all that said, I'm going to give Speak No Evil a C+. Thanks so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.